All right, guys, Tyler down here at Emerald City Guitars. As you can see, we're back in the shop today. Uh, this video might look a little bit different because this video is a little bit different. Uh, it is after hours right now at Emerald City Guitars. The shop is closed. Um, there's peace and quiet in the shop. And uh, sometimes like this, I will like to use to do uh, some really cool projects. Um, and this is one of them in front of me. Um, like I said, the shop is closed. So the guy who does our video has gone home. Um, so this whole video is gonna be shot and edited and everything by me. Um, so I have no experience doing any of that. So it's probably gonna be a little bit rough. There's not gonna be music or uh, sound effects or anything like that. I'm not really gonna clean up the shop. Uh, it's gonna be pretty real, um, but this is a really cool project that I'm getting started on. Uh, I'm doing a pretty extensive restoration on a 1956 Gretsch 6120, which is the Chet Atkins model. Um, it needs a ton of work and has already had a ton of pretty bad work done to it that needs correcting. Um, so there's just a ton to do. Um, yeah, and I think it's going to be interesting. So let's get a different camera angle and we can take a look at the guitar. <clears throat> all right, guys, so here we have it in all its glory. 56, 61, 20. Um, obviously down here were huge Fender and Gibson fans, all the Golden Era stuff from, from the big name companies was awesome. But, I mean, pound for pound, dollar for dollar, I don't know if there's a cooler guitar uh, that came out in the 1950s. These and like the rancher style Jets, um, I'll just take those all day. Super cool. The Western appointments, I just, I can't get enough of it. So awesome. So yeah, let's just run through and uh, see all what is going on with this thing. All right, let's start the headstock. As you can see, there's some Grover Imperials installed there, which would not be original, but uh, are pretty cool given the uh, appointments of the guitar. Um, Let's see, uh, a bone nut there, uh, which would not be original, should be a brass nut. Um, still pre-zero fret though, of course. Let me look at the back there. We have um, a crack going through the tuner holes on the uh, three base side tuners that'll have to be addressed. Um, as you can see, there's some treble side binding pulling up on the first couple of frets. Um, obviously not an uncommon thing. One more thing to note is a horseshoe inlay. Uh, on the headstock. This would be pretty early for that inlay. Um, this is sort of the second aesthetic version of this model. The earlier ones, like 54 and 55, uh, they would have the steer head on the headstock and then the super cool sort of western themed inlays, uh, whereas these later ones, 56, I think around mid 56 and on, would have the horseshoe on the headstock and just the regular block inlays on the fretboard. So let's take a closer look at this fretboard. Um, I don't know if you can see on the video, but it has pretty clearly been planed before. Some of these inlays almost all the way through. Um, the side dots on the binding um, are exposed in some cases, uh, so it has been heavily planed. <sighs> Fret's pretty shot. I think they'll have to be addressed, but uh, that's definitely something we can do. Cool, so we get down back of the neck. A lot of wear, but everything looks good. Uh, until, that is, we get down to the heel. So, let's see if we can get this. You can see that little round cap that we usually see there has definitely been out. It has been filled quite poorly. Um, the line, I don't know if you can see, is redrawn with a Sharpie there. It actually is one of the more convincing aspects of, uh, of this repair. But I can only imagine that means uh, that there's a bolt stuck through there and it's probably into the neck block, which is, again, not uncommon, but not very good for us. Um, Boy, so the neck has been out. As we can see, there's been some really bad patchwork. I'm trying to remount the neck. Um, look like a lot of wood missing there, some wood added uh, back to the cheeks there. And again, some really bad touch up that's way too red. You can see even more clearly on that side. Um, there has been, <laughs> has been some work done that is not good at all. Just globs of glue, just all along the joint there. Thank God it looks like it's for all the world to be water-based. Um, it looks just like tight bond, so I hope it is. Um, see the heel cap there has suffered from uh, shrinkage. Not totally uh, unreasonable this time of year, but it has been off, so we'll have to take that off again. I wouldn't be surprised if they went through the heel to uh, pull that neck the first time. You can see on the treble side here, even into the cutaway under the extension, man, it's just all glued all along either side. Just solid tight bond or some other kind of PVA, but ugh, Yeah, so that's gonna have to come out which uh, yeah, that'll be interesting. We'll have to see So we'll get down to the body here. Um, not all that bad um, Everything looks kind of to be there 
Um, all the hardware, however, uh, pickups, knobs, everything except the Bigsby pretty much, has been painted in this sort of brownish gold, almost looks like tobacco spittle, um, that has sort of turned this regular nickel hardware into an orangish gold looking kind of situation. Um, wasn't done very well, but it kind of looks trashy, kind of cool. So it was pretty messily applied around these pickups, so I might try to clean it up kind of on top of the flatware here, but otherwise I think I'm gonna leave it. Uh, it just adds to the vibe. You can see on the pickguard here, which is original. However, it looks like they got on the back side of that pickguard and scraped the gold paint from the inside of that fence post where the Chet Atkins signature is, but they left the, the signature. It's kind of clear and you can see the orange of the body through that. Um, I wouldn't do it if I had a brand new one, but uh, actually looks kind of cool. Not too bad, and again, adds to the, adds to the vibe. Um, Bigsby looks all original. Um, it's got the spring and the bridge that I took off, uh, so they're not knocking around, but looks all original, nothing too bad there. As you can see, we got some lacquer worn out of that G brand there, but not unusual at all. It's not something that I'd really want to address. All right, so let's get a mirror and uh, look inside here real quick. You'll have to take my word for it. Um, don't know if I can get the camera in there. Um, serial number checks out. All the electronics look like they've been probably soldered, but all look original. Um, big thing that's happening in here. Uh, these are, are, of course, parallel braced and this treble side brace. From about here all the way back to the block, uh, yeah, it's just gone. Um, and then here to uh, maybe middle of the F-hole. Um, it's pretty severely cracked, so I'll have to get some glue in there and fix uh, fix that brace. Um, otherwise, nothing really too bad to note in there. I'm looking at the back here, really not much to note. Um, relatively clean, nice, uh, just predictable wear. Um, there's a little bit of finish scraped off here when the whole catastrophe of the heel happened, but um, all in all, not too bad. Man. You can really see from this angle too. So that left to right neck alignment really doesn't look good to me right here when reference to the cutaway. And that's kind of confirmed when you get down to where the Bigsby is mounted. As you can see here, some uh, extraneous holes that have been drilled uh, and then moved back, I believe. Uh, but that's never good. Uh, obviously they're doing that to try to correct for the terrible uh, left to right neck alignment on that last set. So. Yeah, probably gonna wanna address that. Um, let's get this Bigsby off and see what's going on with the sides. All right, now with the Bigsby off, we can see even clearer um, how bad those holes are. Um, pretty haphazardly drilled there. But we can also see what maybe at the start looks like a little bit of lifting on the binding is actually each of these sides that have come loose from the end block here and have sort of pulled and then twisted um, in opposite directions. So they're a little bit sort of distended, bulging, uh, turgid even, um, but they are loose from the neck block. It looks like maybe somebody got in there and tried to fix them, but uh, yeah, we'll have to get those loose and, uh, and glued back. So uh, just one more thing to do. All right, guys, well, there you have it. 56, 61, 20 with just about everything you can imagine going wrong with it. Um, it's going to be a long road. Uh, thankfully, uh, the gentleman who owns this is a wonderful customer of ours, a longtime friend, and he, he's into it pretty right. So he's really, really amenable to um, doing all of this the right way and uh, us taking our time on it. And of course, he's also agreed to let us do a little video series on it, which is wonderful. Um, and I, I think that's how I'm going to do it, a, a video series rather than doing it all at once and then trying to compile it and release it as one big thing. Um, just kind of go one issue at a time for each video. I think that would be probably the best format for everyone. Um, in any case, uh, I think I'm going to aim for like one a week. Um, I also think I usually like start out too ambitious and I'll have to, you know, um, pair that back a little bit and maybe do it less often. But um, for yeah, uh, for now, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna try to do them once a week. So like I said, this is the first video really of any kind that I've ever done like this. So if you have any sort of uh, comments or suggestions or or pointers on how to make this better or different formats or or what have you, please just reach out and let me know. Uh, I'm more than willing to listen to uh, those suggestions. But in any case. 
Um, that's that. Hopefully, I'll, I'll see you next week. Thanks.